Thor News presents Thor Art. I write movies. Yeah, it's true. I write movies. It's what I do. I've done it for a very long time. And I find that sketching out my ideas really helps the screenwriting process. You see, I enjoy writing at bars. The energy is good for me. I usually write like action, adventure, comedies. So there's always a good energy in bars. You know, pretty girls, angry guys. Hemingway used to say, write drunk, edit sober. Um, I don't know about that, but hey. Anyway, when people see me writing or drawing in a bar, they're always a little freaked out to see a guy with a pen and a pad. So when they ask me what I'm doing, and I tell them I'm writing a screenplay, or working on storyboards, or technically any time, I tell anybody that I write movies or I'm a screenwriter, their first question 95% of the time is always, have you ever had one of your screenplays made into a movie? Have you ever had one of your screenplays made into a movie? And my answer is always no. Asterisk. The asterisk is a very long story which we will not get into today. And that's the truth. Out of about the 14 screenplays, first drafts, that I've written, none have ever been made into a feature film. But here's the deal. I'm a screenwriter. I write feature-length screenplays. I don't run around up and down town and cities telling everybody and all people I make movies. Or I'm a producer. I say I'm a screenwriter. And somehow they seem disappointed or kind of laugh in my face when I tell them none of my movies have ever been made. But I think the only real way to judge me as a screenwriter is to um, read one of my screenplays. I mean, I wouldn't say that the state of affairs in Hollywood where everything is sequels and remakes counteracts with the idea that let's say I'm a Howard Rourkean figure that for the last decade has basically written a new screenplay, an original screenplay, every single year in a first draft form, then put it on the shelf, and then started a brand new screenplay. Because a screenplay is kind of like a relationship, really. At the beginning, you're all excited and hot and bothered, and you want to spend all your time with it, and you get deep inside. And then after a while, usually about six months to a year later, you're really tired of it, you're sick of it, you just want to get done. And so by the time that one is done, you're so in love with another idea that you just can't wait to get started on that one. So that's pretty much what happened. Now, the first two screenplays as I ever finished. I made a decent amount of money off of through things called options and rewrites. Got me an agent, a manager. I got a job on a film in Hollywood with one of my heroes, Irvin Kershner, the gentleman who directed The Empire Strikes Back. So I got to spend 40 days in the desert with him, basically by his side and knowing him, asking him questions and having lots of conversations with him about Star Wars. He was not the biggest George Lucas fan in the world, to be honest. And all of his predictions pretty much came true. What we're looking at here is um one of the 10 screenplays I wrote in the last 10 years uh, is like a big two to four hundred million dollar action fantasy adventure sci-fi film based in 2017 about the greatest samurai of all time. It's very complicated but it's also very simple. It's just a love story between uh, two people who have incredible responsibilities to the rest of the planet. Anyway, I write screenplays. If you want to know how good I am, you gotta read one of them. I read all 14. So the first screenplay I wrote got me a job on a film with my childhood hero. My second screenplay I wrote got stolen by a major studio and then turned into a feature film, but I won't discuss that at this moment. And then after that, I took a 10 year vow of poverty in my quest to become the greatest screenwriter of all time. And out of like the last 12 screenplays I've written, nobody has really read them outside of my mama, Jim, and Dizzy. And Dizzy's fallen off a little bit here in the last few years. And if you look at Hollywood, the screenplay is the foundation of the industry. Fit in on the page, it in on the stage. It's sad to say that outside of Quentin Tarantino, it does feel like the screenwriter is dead. So yeah, like I'm saying, the storyboards you're looking at now, from the greatest story I've ever written, it's a romance, futuristic, adventure, fantasy, sci-fi, action, drama, comedy, and I'll tell you the main two characters are named Satori and Grace. You see, this screenplay has a very large budget, trying to make it the greatest action film of all time, and to get there, I need to make a very low budget feature film let's say, and we're between 100000 to a million dollars, take a couple steps to show people that I deserve to have the mantle. I deserve to take control of a $200 million film. I spent about 25 years trying to figure out the best way to make the best first feature film ever. Although I don't think I'll top Citizen Kane, to be honest. I'm just shooting for like American Graffiti here. So in the next six months, I want to continue to work on my channel and start to do some original productions that six months from now will allow me to put together the investors that it will take for me to make my first feature film. And so to do that, I'm gonna have to upgrade my gear a little. All I have now is one laptop with a broken friggin' screen that I gotta tie into a monitor. And that monitor is crapping out. So what I'm doing here today, instead of Kickstarter where you just donate money, don't really get anything back, I'm putting up all of this art for sale. And if there are any of these pieces that you see that you would like to own, and I must tell you that A, a lot of them are on notebook paper or sketch paper, and B, a few of them have been color corrected in Photoshop, so they'll look very similar to this, but not the exact. And C, I'm not good with business or money, so if anybody wants to buy a new piece of this artwork, help support me to get some new equipment, to help support us to get in a position to continue to make great videos, make better videos so I can compete with the big boys, and eventually hopefully make my first 
throw our newest feature film. Woohoo! Uh, I'd appreciate it. And I guess if you just want to donate, I got a PayPal button on, the, on my about section of my YouTube page. Um, so I just wanted to put these out there. Just hopefully, you know, hopefully you'll just enjoy my art. Please don't be offended. I'm just selling my art, people. I'm trying to upgrade my equipment so I can make better videos that you guys can enjoy. Um, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for listening. Sorry I didn't try and be too funny on this one. Uh, screenwriting and making movies is a very serious subject to me. I've been obsessively, I've been obsessively hyper-focused on this thing since I was like 13. And I've had many peaks and valleys and always kept my eye on the prize. And I just want to make one film to show how good I am or how good I am not. There's a long list of guys who have directed films ahead of me, including Fred Durst from Limp Bizkit, Jeff Probst, the host of Survivor, Rob Zombie from that one band. Um, so I'm just saying that I think A, I deserve a chance to make a movie, and B, my first movie is going to be pretty freaking badass. Anywho, God bless. Thanks for all your support and watching. And um, if you are interested in any of these pieces of art, please let me know which one. And uh, let me know what you'd like to offer, and then I'll, I'll figure something out, frame it up. And like I said, I'm bad at doing this, but we'll, we'll figure it out. If you really want to buy a piece and help me out, then uh, we'll figure something out. Just send me a, a message here on the YouTube. All right, thank you very much. All right, it looks like I've still got about three minutes left in this video. Man, I just listened to it, and um, I feel uncomfortable even, even making this video. I might take it down. I don't know, I'll leave it up for a little while. Well, and I guess I'll talk a little about Irvin Kirshner. He was the director of Empire Strikes Back. As a kid, Empire Strikes Back was by far my favorite movie of all time. Um, and I can't even begin to express how amazing of an experience it was working with that man. They modeled Yoda after him. And he spoke just like that. I mean, not in a reverse term, but he was just always a very serious teacher. Um, super cool guy. He, he was great. And um, I one time he told me the only thing George Lucas loves is money. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, he used to quiz me about how he shot stuff in Empire Strikes Back, and I get some of them right, some of them I wouldn't. It was great stuff, and uh, I remember I, I told him, and I swear this is true, at the time, I was obsessed with Boba Fett. I was gonna get the Boba Fett Squadron tattoo on my shoulder. I didn't, and to this day, I don't have any tattoos. But uh, that's how obsessed I was with Boba Fett, and at the time, I told, this was before the new Star Wars had come out, I, I had told Kirshner, I mean, I told Kirshner my entire plot line for the Boba Fett, movie that I had written and originally I had Boba Fett as a, a woman I thought it would be so badass if Boba took off the armor and was just this hot ass badass chick anyway Kirshner told me your idea is much much better than what Lucas is going to do and I'll take that as a, as a high compliment although I guess it isn't because Lucas's ideas suck there might be like 13 year olds and five year olds who could come up with better Boba Fett crap than that seriously Lucas man so disappointing Honestly, after all the years Spielberg and Lucas talked about how they were going to do everything they could to help young filmmakers and build up the industry, look back at the last 10, 15 years of what Spielberg had done and Lucas, and severely disappointing. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Anyway. Yeah, well, okay, I guess. Yeah, I lived in Hollywood for one year. I got to go to every studio in town at their request. My first spec screenplay got sent out. It was called Detour. It was about three guys who had a winning lottery ticket to a $100 million jackpot and had to go from... Lubbock to Austin with no car, no money, and no friends. It was really funny and it was the first screenplay that got me a lot of attention, a lot of notice, got me the job on that film. What they do is they send out your screenplay on like a Thursday and like all the sub studios get it and their D girls will read it and they'll have a reader read it and if it's good, you know, we'll get it passed up the chain and if they like it, they'll, they'll call you in for a meeting and man, that was fun because pretty much every D girl development girl was hot so it was always cool to talk to hot chicks about uh my movies eh? and then you know going on the studios was a trip i got to go to dreamworks a couple times dreamworks was thinking about making my movie detour for a while and that's why they invited me in there were there was a couple months where several people were talking about studios were talking about making my movie and i was very excited um dreamworks passed uh to make road trip true story um and I remember like one of the guys I was meeting with was Larry Terman. He was the producer of The Graduate, which is another one of my favorite films. He was thinking about making Detour, but he did not. He ended up making a movie called Booty Call with Bill Bellamy, who used to be a VJ on MTV. Yeah, strange times. Anyway, um, I appreciate you guys watching, listening, taking a look at my art. And um, sorry this one isn't funny. And uh, 
I don't know. Something about putting my heart out there makes me uncomfortable. I might, might take this down soon. But uh, stick with me. I promise I'll only do one of these videos like once every six months. So thanks a lot, y'all. God bless.